Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the second English evenings of this semester. Today, we have our honor to invite Mr. Kevin Go to be our guest of honor. Kevin is a certified behavioral consultant. He specializes in DISC psychometric assessment. So, Kevin, man, can you introduce yourself to us? Hello, everybody. My name is Mr. Kevin Go. I'm actually also at the same time teaching at the English Language Teaching Unit, and while I am teaching in the ELT unit itself, this is basically part of my hobby, and this is based generally a psychometric test that we normally do in order for us to know who the other person is. At the same time, that learn how to work and communicate with the other person, and that's basically what the whole DISC is all about. What is yeah? Can you talk more about DISC um to us? Yes, of course, then. But before we start, then, don't you think you have something to tell them? Um, do you have a PowerPoint or something that's? Oh, I do have do? a PowerPoint that I'm going to share with you. So to give you a brief summary, generally, DISC is comprised. Every one of us comprises of every one of us comprises of at least four dominant types of behavior. Whether you are dominant, influential, steady person, or a compliance person, all together. And to know more about it, I will walk you through what does it mean by DISC, and at the same time to go through everything with all of you. All right. So before we start, do mm -hmm. we have a link or some questionnaire for oh, them? Oh yes, definitely we have a link that I'm going to be able to give it to you. Now, if you're going to be here at the same time as well, there is something that I will be um, sending to the chat group. What I want you to do is spend no less than five minutes to do this Google form, and within this each Google form itself, what you need to do is that to click on the link and then finish this simple task within the five minutes as well. While you're working on it, think about how you normally work with other people and responds to other people at the same time as well. All right. Now you may tick tick how many as you want throughout the entire thing, as long as it falls under the category of how you want and sorry how you work with the other person. And that's basically what you need to do. At the end of it, when you click next, they will also give you a mark. Remember to jot down the mark. So each group itself will have twelve, will have twelve categories altogether. And just remember to click on the mark because that will basically then be able to help you to distinguish your DISC. All right, a little bit at least for the beginning part of it. So let's take your time, and we will um ask you to come back like um around eight past ten. Sure, I will then move because someone has something to say. Then, <laughs> um, before we start, we um let me introduce to you guys that we have a brand new section which we prepared some cash coupons for you guys after you have answered some questions in our meetings. Um, those coupons are from Coffee Lover Cafe in New Asia College. For the first few easy questions, a twenty dollar coupon will be given out. And for the last few difficult questions, a fifty dollars coupons will be given to each correct answer. So don't hesitate to answer our questions. Um, so please check your email after for more details on how to get the physical coupons after you have answered. And last but not least, only few HK students are eligible to answer those questions. And please turn on your camera or mic when you are answering. So thank you for your attention. Right, it's time to come back and all together, and it's time for me to take over the entire floor because now I'm gonna kick the MC to the other side. Bish, bish. <laughs> all right. The reason why I'm doing that at the end of the day is also because the MC is a little bit like me, um, very talkative and at the same time a very influential person. Which then at the same time as well, I'm gonna talk more about it later as we move along. So let's start off with whatever it is. Now, before I start off with tonight, and I'm going to share with you the PPT itself. Can you show to me um, a hand? Give me some reaction whether you have actually finished this document or whatever the Google Doc that I've actually just sent out. Like Zhongyuan, Meiqi, Zhihao, have you finished the questionnaire? And Sihu. Right. Thank you, Ricky. So how you finished the not yet? All right, don't worry. I will give you a few more minutes to go to work on it. Don't take too long because you only need five minutes. If you anything longer than that, the accuracy of the test will not be there.
I just sent out the link again to to Wusi. Okay. While well, Wusi is basically working on it, have you all done the task itself other than Wiki? So how are you done? Dongyuan, are you done? Meiki as well. And Amy, hi Amy. Right. Wusi, are you okay? Amy, are you alright? Can you give me a thumbs up if you're done yeah, you're done with this? Okay, we're gonna wait for another few more minutes for Wusi to do it. We'll see. While we're at it then, Zhongyuan, can you tell me which one has more marks? Group 1, Group 2, or Group 3, or Group 4? Zhongyuan, while you're at it, um, can you see whether Group 1 has more marks, or Group 2 has more marks, or Group 3, or Group 4 has more marks? And we'll see as well. Okay, so generally at the end of the day, you can take as many as you want, but some of you basically um, don't worry about it. Let's move on with whatever that we've been doing for today, all right? And that is for sure. And we're going to start off today with knowing Thai self through the ISC and what it does basically means by that. So what we are doing at the end of the day for, or for this particular workshop is to be able for you to know people through the ISC and at the same time, hopefully at the end of the day as well, you are able to then identify people through the type of character they are and at the same time how they normally speak. I will at the same time as well help you to distinguish yourself slightly a bit on the simplified version. It might not be the most accurate, but at the same time, we are, we'll be able to kind of like know where you are at and at the same time where you are from. So the ISE basically means dominant, influential, steady, and compliance. And I'll be using a lot of these terms by for tonight. So thank you so much for doing the Google form at the end of the day. The Google form, if you have clicked up everything and you'll be able to go through everything, when you jot down as many as you can, it will help you to categorize yourself whether you are group one, group two, group three, and group four, and it follows that particular alphabet. Mm -hmm. However, if you did not do that, don't worry because I still have another task that will definitely be able to then separate you into two things altogether. So let's move on to the first one then. Now, the first question that I would like to ask, in the organization, would you consider yourself to be more reserved and reflective or you consider yourself to be more outgoing and extroverted. I repeat, will you then consider yourself to be more reserved and reflective, or will you then consider yourself to be more outgoing and extroverted? All right? Can you write down the answer now? More reserved or more extroverted? All right, and that's for sure. Like for example, Zhongyuan, are you more reserved or are you more extroverted? Can you type out the answer on the chat box now? You're more reserved. Very good. We see is more reserved. Zhongyuan, what are you? Are you more reserved or more reflective or more outgoing? More reserved as well. Okay, very good. So if you're more reserved and more outgoing, and I have another person that will be Wiki. Ariki, are you more reserved or more reflective or more outgoing or more extroverted? Reserved as well. That's very, very good. Now, this is for the outgoing ones. If you're more outgoing, then you probably then have to see whether you seek challenges on the jobs that you're doing, direct, get the done, stop, focus, achieving results, and take initiative, or you generate enthusiasm in others. However, because the whole group, most of you basically are more reserved, I am going to then move into the next slide slightly a little bit and fly through it all together. All right, and that's for sure. Great. If you're more reserved now, then can you tell me this? Are you someone who tends to pay attention to detail, approach tasks systematically and thoroughly, set very high standards, 
think critically and analytically and organize tasks, files, draw drawers, whatever it is well, all right? And that's the first one. Second one, if you are also more reserved, do you then work well as part of a team? Make yourself available to others, maintain current arrangements, take time to listen and consult and maintain good relationships. For those who say that you are more reserved, are you one or are you two? All right, let's start with that then. We'll see, are you one or are you two? Do you tend to pay more attention to details or do you work well with, you no, know, do you work well as part of the team? Number one, all right, thank you, Wu Xi. Zhong Yuan? I think both. Well, Amy, if you have to think both of it, then you have to decide now, one or two. Do you have more one? One as well, all right. Great. So Amy, if you have two, sometimes this also means that your blend is basically both of them at the same time. But however, today we will focus on only one. For those of you, basically you are number one. You are what we call by the compliance people. All right. So basically this is what it means. So if you are someone who seek challenges, you're direct, you get job done fast and efficient, you are most of the time a very dominant person. And that's basically number D. So if you generate enthusiasm in others, like working with others at the same time as well, you are very influential. If you're someone who tends to pay attention to detail, approach tasks systematically, thoroughly, and set a very high standard, you are what we call by the compliance person, or a compliance person. And if at the same time as well, if you're someone who basically like to work as part of the team, you are what we call by a steady person, all right? While I'm at it, then let's go through some of the general characteristics for each and every one of the category itself. All right. Now, you need to know all these general characteristics because these general characteristics will be something that you look at and also at the same time in order for you to be able to identify whether your friend, your colleague, your boyfriend, your girlfriend is a D type or an I type or a C type or an S type. So this is what it is, all right? So let's move on to whatever that we have to do today. So DISC in short basically is a research that has consistently shown that behavior can be grouped into four main categories itself. This research has been around since the 8th, 1600 altogether, right? And it has been a very long research. And at the same time then, it basically will be able to help you. Now, you use this workshop to learn how to communicate well with others and work well with others at the same time as well. And hopefully at the end of the day, I will also be able to show to you some of your own weaknesses, all right? Now, I'm going to flash through the first three sites because the first three sites will be dominant, influential, and steady. You need to know them, but at the same time, you don't really need to, in a way, then move into it. So what are some of the characteristic of a very dominant person. If you're looking at a very dominant person, you will be able to see that, you'll be able to see Hulk. Hulk is a very dominant person. Now, this is the question that I'm going to ask now. Anybody wants to answer? Why do you think that Hulk is a very dominant person to begin with? Why do you think Hulk will fall, will fall under this category? What is in Hulk that will be part of it. Yes, Hulk is a very, very strong guy. Hulk is like Hulk do everything. One thing for sure why in Avengers Hulk is a very dominant person is because Hulk at the end of the day, when he sees something, when he sees an enemy, what will he do? Hulk will say, Hulk smash. Right? He's, he's, when he's doing something, he goes straight to it, he bangs at it, he has the strength, and he will basically kill the enemy. That's what makes Hulk a very dominant person. Because at the end of the day, he is a very courageous person. It's just that Hulk, because at the end of the day, he doesn't really have a lot of bond leaders and stuff like that, is because of the ability and part of it. But that personality is part of what Bruce Banner has. And that's a complement between the D and the S. But Hulk generally has the strength and at the same time go with it. But one thing for sure, if you want to see whether your friend is a D or an S or D, it's a very simple thing altogether. Like Hulk, a D person generally most of the time, they are very argumentative, they are very strong willed and at the same time, if they don't like something, they can always just say it straight at your face, right? 
that's it. They, it's more like, if you look at it, they are unsympathetic and they are very cold. But at the same time, they are like that because they are very task oriented. They look at tasks to decide what is right, what is wrong. And they will go all out to make sure that they are able to do their job well. And that basically is a very dominant person. To them, they don't like to spend time small, doing small talk with you. And to them, basically then, whether you're happy or not, it's a different story. Remember someone who looks exactly like that? Of course, by now you'll be able to see that that will be like exactly like the dominant, um, exactly like Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a very dominant person who basically doesn't care hoot about whatever that he's doing as long as you get the job done. That is a very dominant person. All right, let's move on to the second one then. This is what we call by an influential person. Why do we say that Iron Man is a very influential person to begin with? So when you look at the strengths and the weaknesses, what do you think Iron Man has that will categorize him as a very, very I person, a very influential person, do you think? So how, Meiki? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, so how, why do you think Iron Man is a very influential person? Leadership, oh wow, and he has money. Well, not all I people has money. I am very poor, Meiki. I am not rich as well, but I am also a very influential person. <laughs> And that's for sure. Now, the thing is, it's not because Iron Man is rich. Um, there are certain things altogether when you look at Iron Man. If you look at Iron Man, he's very humorous. He likes humor. He likes talking. He's the life of the party. He is a leader at the same time, like a very dominant person as well. And I can be a very influential person. They influence people. They, and, you know, they make sure that people will change according with them at the same time as well. They are very enthusiastic. They are very expressive they go all out to make sure that they will be able to do certain things. However, the problem with an I is that sometimes we are very egocentric and at the same time, we kind of like have a very egotistical and obnoxious behavior to be that. If you look at an I, sometimes you'll be like, ooh, that guy is a bragger. So basically that will be us. We like to then talk and but the worst thing ever, for those who know me, like for example, you know, one of my best friends is here, he kind of like will agree with me that I am a very disorganized person. So an I is very disorganized, really, really true. So that's the fact altogether. But what makes Iron Man strong at the end of the day is his ability to then talk to people to make sure that they will go all out and they will follow them all together, all right? And that's it. Great, strengths, weaknesses of an I. Let's look at strengths and weaknesses of an S, a very steady person. Why do you think Captain America is at, falls under the category of being steady? Nikki, do you want to give it a try? Nikki? Zihao, we see. Why do you think Captain America is a very steady person? And why do you think he falls under this category? Hmm? We see. Zihao, Macy, Ricky, Amy, anyone? So why do you think Captain America? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Wusi say, oh, not emotional. Mm, yes. <laughs> and that person is not emotional, and that's for sure. Right. Anyone else who wants to give a wild guess? What do you think Captain America's strongest point is? I can do this all day. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> that's for sure. He doesn't change. Now, for a very steady person, teamwork, very good. Um, Captain America also at the same time is a very strong leader. He likes teamwork. What is his favorite word when he basically then tell Avengers to do everything? He will then say, Avenger assembles. So basically then, that's teamwork. He wants the whole team to be there. He wants the whole team to work together. And that's basically what Captain America is all about. One thing good about a steady person is that they are very loyal. 
Look at Captain America. Since day one to the end, he has been the most loyal of them all to America. And he will stick by his rule. If he thinks something is right, he will make sure that he will follow it through. And at the same time, he's also a very people person. In a sense, he talks to people. He makes things to be very practical. But he is a very, very low-key person. As compared to Iron Man, who's going to go all out to make sure that he is the fame. Captain America is on the other hand. He doesn't really like fame that much. Even though both of them, they are very people person. If you look at the 16 personality, Captain America is what we call by a very introverted person, while Iron Man is a very extroverted person. One thing for sure that if you ever do have a lot of S friends, which is 67% in this world, a lot of us basically are very S people. One thing for sure as people you have to notice is that they are very slow. In the sense is when it comes to changes, they will take some time to make sure that they are ready before they will then jump into it. It's because at the end of the day, they can be very indecisive and they can be very fearful altogether, right? And that's for sure, right? Let's move on to the last one then. The very last question. Why do you think that we put Black Widow as a very compliance person? What makes Black Widow a very compliance person? Is it because she's a perfectionist? Is it because she is very loyal? Is it because she's genius prone? Is it because she's very artistic and musically you no know, gifted? Is it because she's very analytical and idealistic at the same time as well? What do you think she falls under? All right, anyone? Just one last question, and that's for sure. Okay, Meiki, Usi, the rest of you, Amy, Ricky, quite similar with Captain America. Mm, yes, she is very, a, a team per, work person as well, if you want to put it that way. Anybody else? Zhong Yuan, Si, Usi? Sacrificing, wow. That's a very, very good word, Ricky. Anybody else? Calm. Okay, she's very, very calm. <laughs> Not claim. <laughs> but that's good, that's good. Anything else that you want to say? Why do you think that Captain, why do you think that Black Widow is a C? Now, Black Widow is a little bit different from Black Hawkeye. If you know Avenger, you also have Hawkeye, but Hawkeye and Black Widow fall, falls under one category. Hawkeye is more into accuracy and detail-oriented. That's very Hawkeye. Black Widow is more into persuading you with facts and precision. Remember when she attacks, she doesn't really attack people randomly. She goes to, like, Hawkeye very precise. If she wants to attack someone, she attacks someone and she knows what is happening. She will also persuade you with a lot of facts and information. And when you give something to her, she will make sure that she will follow through the job. That is a very, very eye person. Now, she might, you might say, but she also uses her emotions. She emo uses her emotion only if she needs information from you. If not, she is also like a bit of B. They are very task-oriented people. They don't talk about emotion. They go all out. So a C person at the end of the day will be someone that we don't really show them their emotions. They are very task-driven. So if most of you say that you're a very compliance person, you tend to be more task-oriented. We call these kind of people very fact-oriented. So whatever you do, you follow steps, you follow rules, you follow regulations. However, at the end of the day, I have to say something as well. This is D-I-S-E. So basically, there is something that you have to know. In every one of us, we have a plan. Like, for example, um, Amy say, oh, I have both S and C. So Amy might have one of them as a blend. Like my, basically, I am an IS. I have a blend of being steady as well, family oriented. So some in this short little thing altogether, um, I can't really then decide whether you have any blend and what blend that you have. 
but if you think that you're a compliance person, then use the compliant person to really speak to people. Now you know what is happening. Now you know the general characteristics. Then I'm gonna skip. I'm gonna skip this slightly a little bit because there are another few more slides that I want to go through with you. But at the same time as well, I'm gonna ask you a very simple question. You know what is DISC altogether already. What do you think how each and every one of them verbalize his or her ideas, vocalize his or her ideas in general, and show his or her body language in general as well? Now, you all also know that we have coupons to give out today, and I've been asked and tasked by my dear colleague to basically give out coupons, and that is what I'm going to be doing today. So, the first question is how do you think, all right? How do you think a D person, a very dominant person, will talk? How do you think a D person, a very dominant person, will look, verbalize his or her idea or vocalize his or her ideas? Any students in the group, can you give me a thumbs up? Can you show me a sign that you're a student? Yes to how? Do you want to answer that? We're going to discuss this as a group, so don't worry about it because we only have very few people, so we can do this as a very big group. So to how? Do you want to give it a try? So how do you think? How do you think? How do you think Hulk verbalized his or her ideas, and how do you think Hulk vocalized his or her ideas in general? Can you answer it? Can you open your mic and at the same time open your um, open your video camera so that at least then my colleague on the other side will be able to know who you are? So how? We'll be fine. Hello. Uh, hello, hello, sir. Uh, maybe how can we all say, well, if you say we're going to do something, why do it right now? And why not do it straight away? Why not go straight up to it? Uh, maybe I I got a uh, misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. No, no, no! Don't worry, don't worry, because there is some problem out of it. So, how do you think Hulk speaks? Well, uh, so I think he speaks very uh, enthusiastically mm -hmm. and uh, some sometimes wildly today, maybe. <laughs> very good very good that, that's exactly it if you look at it a very dominant person will basically then states more than us all right what he does at the end of the day is that he will talk more than listen all right like you say he's very direct he will just go all out he relies basically on more verbal and written than written and then he will go all out and talk to people which i will show you more about it later as well thank you to how uh, my colleague basically will will reply you with some of the things through the chat group so that then you'll be able to give her some of the information for you to claim this coupon from the, oh, oh, right? okay, okay, from the coffee lover. Thank you. Okay. Great. Um, how many students do I have now then? Wusi, are you a student? Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Wusi, are you a student? Yeah. Yeah, good. Wusi, can you yes. show me your face at least then, if you don't mind? Oh, sorry, sorry, because I'm not convenient to open no my camera. No worries. If it's not convenient, don't worry. Blow face, voice itself is fine, according to Jason, <laughs> my colleague. <laughs> so great. Jason, oh, thank you. Um, Wusi, I'm going to ask you a very simple question since you are a very compliance person. How do you think a very compliance person will speak? um actually what you just uh talked about compliance person is a little different from what i think a compliant person is mm -hmm. so because i think um i'm not uh, really that uh, fact oriented mm -hmm. i'm more uh emotional so you're so, very emotional yeah emotional. yeah Okay, so I'm a little confused. Okay, mm -hmm. good. No worries, no worries. So I'm, I'm going to ask you then. How do you think an influential person will speak? An influential pe person? Mm, 
I think uh, they will ask for more. I think they will ask for others' opinions more before they want to talk about their own opinions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. That's that's very very good. That's very good. My colleague will will talk to you at the same time as well. All right. So an influential okay. person at the end of the day, you'll be able to see that they like to share their feelings. They are more opinion oriented, and at the same time, they like to use their feelings to talk to people. And that's basically a very influential person. I will show you that all together. And the very last person that I'm gonna ask basically will be Meiki. Meiki, are you a student? Yes, Mickey. If you can't show me your face, at least give me your voice. <laughs> okay, you can't use the microphone as well, so don't worry about it. But Mickey, let me ask you a very uh, simple question: Are you a very compliance person? Mickey, are you a very compliance person? Yes or no? It's comparing to the other three. So basically, what do you think how, when you speak to people, what do you normally use? Or what will be the tone? Or how do you talk to people most of the time as a very C person? My mouth. <laughs> what, is, what is that, by the way? Um... MC, what is that word? Gentle. All right, that's very gentle. So if you're going to be very gentle, soft, then it's a very S person, and that's for sure. All right, that's a very S person. So let me just go through with you some of the things, basically, at the end of the day. what it, How do basically a D person will speak? How do an S person will speak? But at the same time as well, Meiki, my colleague, will talk to you regarding all the, the coupon, all right? And that's for sure. So great. Now, if you're a very dominant person, whatever you do, what you do and how you want to analyze a dominant person, especially by the way that the dominant person will do, is how that dominant person will speak. A dominant person most of the time will tell you what to do. A dominant person at the end of the time, they, at the end of the day, they don't listen. They talk, all right? They will then make very strong statements and they tend to be very, very blunt and to the point. What you need to remember, a very dominant person, is that they like to get the task done. So e, by now, you'll be able to see whether your friend is a very dominant person or not by looking at the way that they speak. Because they are an extrovert, they have a, you, they have a great deal of vocal variety. However, when they speak, they tend to be very forceful. All right? They don't talk about emotions. A D person at the end of the day is that they can quarrel. They, you, when you talk to a D person, it's like you can quarrel with that person almost any time. That is a very D person, all right? And most of the Hong Kong mamas in Hong Kong, they are very dominant, sadly to say. <laughs> but that's it, all right? They use high volume rapid speech and at the same time, they use challenging tones to challenge you. If you shake hand with them, their handshake will be very firm. They look at you when they speak. They, uh, they then would display that they are quite impatient most of the time. That is a very dominant person. Sounds exactly like Hulk. Bingo. That's Hulk. All right? That's a very dominant person. So one way to look if the person is dominant through the way they speak, this is it. Now, how to make sure that a person is, how to make sure that a person is I? An I person, one thing that you need to know, they love to tell stories from their grandmother's stories to their grandfather's stories to their own stories. They will tell stories. The instant they start telling you stories, you kind of let them know, this guy bloody hell, sorry. <laughs> this guy, in a way, definitely will be influential, and that's for sure. They also like to share their feelings, their opinions, and you'll be able to see me. I'm very informal, I'm very expressive. I'm a very I person, and that's me. Um, that's what I like to do. But I, at the end of the day, what we have a bad tra trait that nobody will be able to follow is that we jump from A, B, C, D. When we talk, we go from A to B to C. We can go back to A, go back to D, go back to B, go back to A. That's a very I, and that's basically me. When I speak, I tend to use a lot of inflection. You'll be able to see that it goes up and down, and at the same time, it goes everywhere. 
that's me. I'm a very I person. And because at the end of the day, I like to use a lot of vocal variety to talk to people. And I'm very dramatic when I'm talk actually talking to people, right? When I shake hands, it can be very firm. I use a lot of expression to talk to you. I use a lot of contact. I will hug you. I will give you a big hug. I will tap your shoulder at the back itself. I'm a very beautiful person. I'm a likable person. If you see me in real life, you'll be able to see me that I am like that as well. So that is basically a very influential person to begin with, right? So if you see that kind of person, you know that person is very influential already, all right? Now, how do you know that that person is basically very steady? A very steady person will then ask more than state. They like things to be slow and steady, so therefore they will ask a lot of things. They will listen to you. Now, most of the time I got, there was this one day I did this test. Now, this is when I tell stories to the very eye person. My students say, mm, I like to listen to people. Then I ask that student, do you like to listen to people when they tell stories? Do you like to listen to people when they talk about facts? Mm. That's when you know that she is also a very influential person. And as person, on the other hand, though, regardless whether you're talking about facts or you're talking about stories, an as person will be there, listen to you. So an as person is a very good friend. That's what they say. So if you're sad, talk to an as person. They can listen to you all night long and be with you all night long. Good friend. That's also because they are also very loyal, <laughs> that's for sure. They reserve their opinions, they use less verbal communication, they are very slow in pace, but at the same time, that's very dumb. They are very, very loyal, all right? They speak in a very mild manner, very calm manner, they don't force you, and they use very slow speech rate, and that's basically them, all right? They shake your hand gently, they are very slow, they make very, very shy eye contact, they have a lot of patience, that is a very S person, all right? Now, let's move on to the C, which most of you proclaim that you are. How will C speak? C tends to talk about facts and tasks. C, feelings. Nah, it's okay. They don't share a lot of feelings, though. To them, they need to get things done as well. So facts is facts. When facts comes first, facts will come first. Emotion, whether you're happy, whether you're sad, it's okay. Facts must be right first. They are very compliance-based. Compliance is always going to be rule. So they are very formal, they are very proper, and at the same time, they focus on communication. They use very, very less verbal. If you're going to be working with a C, write them an email. They love. And how to make sure that a person is C? Very simple. When you read their email, oh my God, it's going to be like one whole long list. That's how a very C person will write. Right, Alpha? <laughs> a very SI person will be very short, a very C person when they write emails, it tends to be very long-winded. It's also not because that they can't get things, they don't want to get things done in a very simple manner. They want things to be very, 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 we see my repetition now, very, 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 they want things to be really, really clear. They don't really use a lot of vocal variety like an S. And at the same time as well, they are very monotonous, very slow. They just want things to be as clear as possible. If they can, they want to tell you, this is the thing, this is what you need to do. These are all the steps, get it done. And that's it, end of the story. So that's a very compliance person. They don't really use a lot of facial expressions. They don't really use a lot of gestures. They move when they need to move. They will talk when they need to talk. That's a very compliance person, all right? And compliance, as usual, at the end of the day, they are very C person, all right? So now let's move on to this then. Now, if you're going to be talking to a DISC, how do you think you'll be able to talk to that person, all right? And that's basically will be something that I'm going to go through with you now. If you want to talk to a D, be brief, be direct. Don't really talk about emotions. Emotions to a D is useless. To them, get the facts right, praise them of their result and achievements, be direct, be brief, and that's it. Okay, that's how you talk to a D. If you want to talk to an I, tell them that you like them. Oh, you like their natural, you know, you like their natural charisma, you like them, do some small talk, be with them, only then start talking to an I. And that basically is how you talk to an I compliment them and I love compliment even though an I sometimes will tell you oh I am not like that but deep down inside the eye it's going to be very happy right 
and always remind them, oh, you're a very fun person to be with and I will be super happy, all right? And that's it, that's an I, okay? Now, how to talk to an S? If you want to talk to an S, be warm, assuring. Do not shout. The instant you shout, the instant the S will run away. Let's just say it, S is very slow, steady, very warm and gentle. They like people to be gentle with them as well. So talk to them regularly. Be warm with them, be sincere and praise them. So that is how you talk to an S. Now, most of us, basically, we, most of our friends might be very S people. So be gentle when you talk to them. 60, 70% of this world, they are very S people, right? And that's for sure. Good. And the last one is C. When you talk to a C, be specific and brief. These are the steps. These are the tasks. These are the facts. This is what I want. Be specific talk to them, give them everything, and they will be able to respond to you, all right? Now, put everything in writing, they will be even happier because they don't like to talk to you face-to-face. -face. They'd rather you send email to them, all right? And that's for sure. Now, something for you to know as well when it comes to this. Now, if you're a D, please do not use your D mode to talk to an S mode. An S person do not like to talk to a D person. A D person do not like to talk to an S person because a D person is very direct, very loud. The I person would then tend to shy away and would then shut. Then communication will not work, all right? And that's for sure, okay? All right, so if you say, for example, you're a very S person and you're talking to a D person, be brave and talk straight to a D person even though you don't like it. That's the difference between D and S. You also have I and C. I and C cannot see eye to eye as well. Why? Because I love stories. They like to tell grandmother stories, which C will then look at them and like, oh, why are you telling me stories? Tell me facts. I need something to hold on to. I will then look at C and be like, why are you talking about facts? That's so boring. Talk stories. Talk about something interesting. That's it. But if you're an I, you want to talk to a C, talk facts. If you're a C, talk to an I, be more approachable, be more friendly, and then the I will like you. And that's basically it. So, Meiki, if you think that you're a C would be better, don't worry. As I said, there's a blend. So, you might be a C and S at the same time, all right? Like my, my friend Jason here, he is an SC. They don't know him. He was not going to show you your face, so you don't know who is he. <laughs> but he is an SC. So you might have a blend. I am an IS, so don't worry about it, okay? So that's it. And the last thing I'm going to go through with you because it's already um, 8.47 is how to work with a D. When you're, how to work with them. If you're going to be working with a D, this is straight. This is what you need to do. Be straightforward. Tell them. Give them all the direction. Give them the task. Tell them what to do. Leave them be. D person, they are very good at problem solving on their own. They are very good in doing things on their own. They can do things on their own without your help. That's a very D person, okay? That's it. If you're an I person, then make sure that you recognize their achievements. Get them excited about the project that they want to do. I people, they are very feel type. So the more happier they are to work with you, the more they will work with you. The sadder and the the more they hate you, they are not going to do anything for you. Trust me on that because I'm an I. So when I'm happy, I do a lot of things for you. When I'm not happy about you, I will stay away from you 10 miles away. I see you, I run away first then. That's a very I. So make sure that if you want a, an I to work with you, if you have a very I person, you know that they are very talkative, then make sure that you really then be friend with them. They will work for you and that's it. But one thing for sure, you've got to be really careful when it comes to an eye. An eye can be very forgetful and they are always disorganized. They tend to like forget dates. Remember to remind, constantly remind I that they have some responsibility to do it, to do something, all right? How to work with an S? Very, very simple. Make sure that you hold their hands and work together as a team. We are a team and work together. That's how you work with your and ask. Make sure that you support their feelings. You make sure that you give them enough time to go through everything. Make sure that you don't force them. 
and make sure that you give them feedback and work with them at the same time and as love to work with you and he doesn't or she doesn't mind working with you as long as you work you work together as a team as i remember like captain america team is very important for an ass and that's how you work with an ass and if you have a very c person very easy what you need to do is give the c person all the steps be organized be thorough make sure that you explain everything make sure that you have all the facts right give it to them and they will be able to do everything step by step without fail if you want anything to be done notes evidence give it to a c a c will give you all the evidence in the world to support your work because a c person when it comes to finding evidence they cannot miss all the details and that's a very c person so you kind of like then know now b i s c all right and a D, an I, and an S, and a C, and that's basically how you're going to work with them, all right? So I've talked to you how to work, how, how to analyze a DISC person, kind of like know where they are. I have also shown you how to talk to them and how to work with them at the same time as well, all right? Now, before I end the session and pass it back to the MC, I have two more questions for you that will be worth 50 Hong Kong dollar at Coffee Lover, all right? So how many students do I have here in this group? I'm really sorry if you're a teacher, I can't really ask you for help. So how many students are there in this group? Can you show me, can you give me a reaction whether it's gonna be thumbs up, it's gonna be clapping hands. How many students are there? Wusi is one of them, Meiki is one of them. Um, how is one of them? Zhong Yuan, are you a student? Okay, Zhong Yuan is missing now already. Hi. All right. Good, good. So I'm gonna give you a fifty ring. I'm gonna give you a fifty Hong Kong dollar coffee lover voucher here by answering a very simple, a very simple question. All right, and that's basically for sure. Okay. My first question. I've shown you for. Avengers all together. I've shown you all four Avengers, right? I've shown you four Avengers. Can you give me who they are and at the same time their personality? Whether they are D or I, an S or a C, can you name them? All right, if you want to take this question, by all means, open your mic and speak. I have shown you four Avengers. Who are they and what are their characteristics? Zhao, Meiki, Wusi. You can choose to type as well. Meiki, uh, give me all four. Me? Good, if you can remember. Hello. Hello. Hi, Wusi. Yeah, uh, I remember that Captain America is a steady person, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I think the personality is that um, he is kind of like a reluctant leader and he's very practical. All right, great. So Captain America is S and then the other three. <clears throat> mm, the other three, I cannot quite name the the character. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, no worries. Yeah. So mm. great, great. Because great. yeah, uh, I'm not familiar with the character. <laughs> I will give you the twenty Hong Kong dollar for trying. Okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so you have Forty Hong Kong dollar now with you. All right, good. Uh, we'll see. Good, Macy, Mickey, another two more. Iron Man is I, yes. Hulk is D. Another two more characters. Do you know them? Black Widow is C, Calm, and the last person. <clears throat> Who's the S? All right, great, thank you. Thank you so much for answering it. You will definitely get the 50 um, Hong Kong dollar voucher. My colleague now will message you about the Hong Kong 
um, the $50 coffee lover voucher makey. All right, great. One last question that I'm going to ask all of you, and that's basically the easiest. All right, so I have, we have gone through everything. I have also mentioned it a lot of time. What is my, what are my personalities? What are my personalities? If you want to switch on the mic and speak, or you can type, what are my personalities? I have two. Zihao, one more. <laughs> All right, wait, good. So, influential. All right, so the whole thing is I am both I and S at the same time. So can I award 250 to both of them? All right, Jason say yes. So Zihao and Wu Si, both of you will be getting that 50 Hong Kong dollar from Coffee Lover as well. All right, so that's it. I think that's the end of today's workshop from me all together. All right, my name is Kevin Go. I'm from the ELTU unit. I'm also a CBS, a Certified Behavioral Consultant. If you'd like to know more about the DISC personalities, you're more than welcome to see me in person when you come back to Chinese University, all right? And I am more than happy to go through with you your plan and go through with you your personality type as well. For that, then I'm going to be signing off and I'm going to pass it back to the MC so that the MC will be able to tell you more about some of the other things or the other events that might happen in basically NU Asia. All right, to that, I'm signing off. Bye bye. So, thank you, Kevin, for such a um, wonderful sharing today. Um, but before we move on to the next session, may Zhi Hao please um, answer the chat box um, for my uh, the message from my colleagues. We have some um, um, we need you need your information to uh, pass on the coupon to you. So last but not least, before you guys leave, please help us to answer this feedback form um, by scanning the QR code here. We really um, need your help for us to give you some give us some feedback for uh, improving our meetings um, um, thereafter. So please uh, scan the QR code and fill in the feedback form below. And um, we really appreciate your participation and your response today. Thank you, everyone. Um, if uh, you can also revise the record of to, recording of today in our Facebook page, we will um, upload the link of today's Zoom uh, section to the, to the to our Facebook page. So please um, like and follow our Facebook page. The name is um, NACLACC. So please um, keep in touch with us. <laughs>